So the purpose of this guide is to get alts to 1.42 mil CP as support for birth rate. Do not follow this guide if your goal is to reach 1.42 mil CP on your main. Please refer to the PVE progression guide linked in the description for that purpose. In this guide, I will say things along the lines of generally X gives more CP, but be aware that which stat gives you more CP can depend on your current build. For example, generally maximize and critical will give more CP than boss damage, but if you have 100% maximize and no boss damage, you will get a bigger CP boost from boss damage. If you are not sure if X investment will give you more CP, etc., please go to Ashell's calculator, go to calculators, then equipment, plug in your things, then see if Xing will give you more CP or not. I previously wrote a guide on how to hit 332.5k CP. To hit that CP requirement, there are fewer options and a more right way to do it. However, for birth rate, there are a lot of different variables and some things are player preference. This guide does not cover everything. I included generally the things I thought were most relevant and or cost and or time efficient. So the first thing I want to address is should you be making a birth rate out to begin with? Unlike Rosa raid alts, you don't need to make a birth rate out for a few reasons. Birth rate is less profitable than SDs. People only run birth rate for the weapon, accessories, for the title black and white, and or to evolve their VOS. Unlike Rosa raid, you are not getting profit by making a birth rate alt. Birth rate is a lot harder to get into than Rosa raid. You can pretty much hit 332.5k CP for free for Rosa raid, but to hit 1.425 mil CP for birth rate, it requires around 3 bill ED. Birth rate alts have short lives of usefulness. Rosa Raid alts are forever useful as farming Rosa Raid is a good source of income and you'll need to farm the raid from time to time for Mystic Zones, FOJs, and Exodias, but once you have gotten the birth rate weapon and get the birth rate accessories, your birth rate alt pretty much loses its usefulness. So why should you consider making a birth rate alt? Birth rate is really brutal. To be DPS in birth rate, not only do you need extensive investment in your main, around 4 mil CP, in order to do DPS in birth rate, unlike Rosa raid, you need to be very familiar with the boss attack patterns and know how to take advantages of windows where you can DPS. Playing support in birth rate is a lot easier to achieve in comparison. And also, if you are in a rush for the weapon and or the accessories, having an ult gives you more chances for the drops. And then next I want to talk about what class should you make as a birth rate alt. The best class to make for birth rate by far is Comet Crusader. Your other options are Radiant Soul, Celestia, or Blue Hen. So Comet Crusader has a naturally high CP that makes hitting the CP requirements a lot easier. He is an essential class of birth rate because he is one of the only classes in the game that can provide super armor. He also provides Rapid Guardian, which mainly decreases cooldown speed, and Wonderwall also increases party's damage reduction, which is extremely important, especially in 15-6 Phase 3. He's insanely easy to play in birth rate in comparison to other classes as support because of his skill guard and his overall tankiness. Radiant Soul also has naturally high CP that makes hitting the CP requirements a lot easier, though CC does have more CP. This class provides a wide range of buffs and debuffs, but most notably, Radiant Soul can heal through her skill Sun Shower and provide defense through her skill Reflection. Blue Hand also provides a wide range of buffs and debuffs, but most notably, he provides consistent healing for the party and greatly reduces the need for party members to chug consumables. Celestia has not been released in NA and he is relatively new in KR2, and it seems like this class is more of an offensive support class than a defensive or healing support class. And because he is a new class and appears to be hard to play, player bases have yet to fully utilize him. There is a fundamental difference between building a Rosa Raid alt and a Birth Raid alt. Because birth rate is a crappy raid that requires you to have to essentially tank certain boss attack mechanics, you essentially need two sets of equipment for a birth rate alt. One set of equipment is to help you hit the CP requirements, and the other set is to help you survive the actual raid. You enter the raid with your CP boosting equipment, then switch to your defensive equipment. This guide covers both builds. So right here, this is my build to get to the CP requirements, and then my defensive build would look something like this. So this is what I'd actually be using in the raid. In order to hit the CP requirement for birth rate, I have three suggestions. Which option you go with depends largely on your preferences and your situation. This is also the minimal amount I feel required to hit the CP requirement, but if you have something better, by all means use that. So the first option is to go for a plus 9 FOJ and plus 10 4 out of 4 fully decked Aurea Node armor. Option 1 is most ideal, it generally is the cheapest option. However, there are a few things to consider. The first is, getting in with a plus 9 FOJ generally requires a high ERP level and or a well-developed L-Search party collection. 
If you are lacking an ERP and or LSearch Pity collection, you still can hit the CP requirement with a plus 9 FOJ, but it may be more cost efficient to simply get a plus 10 FOJ instead. I would highly recommend plugging in your numbers through Ashell's calculator to see if this option is viable for you. This option is more geared towards veteran players because veteran players are assumed to have higher ERP, a well-developed LSearch party collection, and also veteran players most likely already have plus 10 4 to 4 fully decked El Rio Node armor and or would benefit the most from making a plus 10 4 to 4 fully decked El Rio Node armor set. El Rio Node armor is also bank shareable, so investing money into a plus 10 fully decked El Rio Node armor set benefits a whole account, and especially if you want to make more than one birth rate alt, this option is highly recommended. So pros, it's generally the cheapest option and also strong bank shareable El Rio Node armor benefits a whole account. As for cons, it requires you to have a high ERP level, so around ERP 300. Another con is it requires a well-developed LSearch party collection. My definition of a well-developed LSearch party collection is around 20 or so classes that boost CP register that are third job or higher. Option 2 exists if you are having a hard time getting in with a plus 9 FOJ due to low ERP and or having an underdeveloped LSearch party collection. With a plus 10 FOJ, you can use plus 9 4 to 4 L Rio Node armor instead and not have to invest in a plus 10 set. You can also work on your ERP and or LSearch party collection so you can do the first option, but this option exists if you are more of in a hurry, etc. And finally, option 3 is a plus 10 FOJ and plus 8 Reforged 0 4 to 4 Crimson Rigamore armor. Option 3 is arguably the easiest method. This option also exists if you're having a hard time getting in with a plus 9 FOJ due to low ERP and or having an underdeveloped LSearch party collection. If you are using a plus 10 FOJ, you can hit the CP requirement with a plus 8 4 to 4 Reforge 0 Crimson Rigamore Armor set. Plus 8 is free and you don't need to reforge your Rigamore Armor at all, making it easy. For El Rio Node Armor, you need to have it at plus 9 or plus 10 and need to get good L tiers for the set. The reasons why I don't recommend this option is because Rigomore armor is not bank shareable, so it doesn't benefit your whole account. If you plan on making more than one birth rate alt, it's even more unrecommended. Also, if you plan to save time by crafting the Rigomore armor pieces on different characters, you will need to pay for the seal cost to move the armor. You can also save time by buying Rigomore armor, but that will cost more money. If you want to save the cost of seals, then it will take more time to make all the Rigomore armor pieces on your birth rate alt character. In general, I would highly recommend pushing for option 1. Working on your ERP level and LSearch party collection is something you will need in the long run, and having a strong plus 10 4 to 4 El Rio Node armor set is always nice to have. Option 2 and 3 are potentially faster and or easier alternatives, depending on the urgency of how quickly you want to have your birth rate alt ready. I do want to point out that option 2 and 3 are generally more sustainable. The supply of plus 10 El Rio Node armor pieces and E plus 2 and E times 5 pieces is relatively small, and if everyone wins option 1, it might deplete the market and or make option 1 no longer cheaper than option 2 and 3. Alright, so let's talk about the weapon first. So you want to be using either a plus 9 FOJ or a plus 10 FOJ. For more information on how to farm Roaster Raid for an FOJ, please refer to the guide linked in the description. And then you want your FOJ to either be plus 9 or plus 10, and there isn't any easy way to get the FOJ to plus 9 or plus 10. What you will most likely be doing is just buying a plus 9 or plus 10 amulet off the board. If the alt you're trying to get in is a blacksmith, you could try advanced enhancing the plus 9, but I would not recommend this for plus 10. If you are not in a rush, you could wait until the next enhancement event, the price of amulets will go down, and or you can try enhancing the plus 9 or plus 10 yourself. Enhancement events make enhancing easier, have a lot of sales for enhancement items, and give you a lot of free enhancement items as well. For a guide on enhancing, please refer to the guide linked in the description. You want to remember to wedge and socket your FOJ weapon. You may not need to wedge your FOJ depending on what you have. The stats you want to aim for are critical or maximized, as those give the most CP. Preferably, you'd want to use Sage Stones, but if you don't have Sage Stones, you can also use Shining Duo Magic Stone of Extremities. For more information on socketing, please refer to the guide in the description. You want to Mystic Enhance your FOJ, you want to socket things that boost CP. Ideally, you'd want to socket Physical or Magical Attack level for red, Physical or Magical Attack power for blue, and Physical or Magical Attack power for yellow. And 2 Physical or Magical Attack powers, and 1 Physical or Magical Attack level for giants. You'd also ideally want to socket with Shining Mystic Stones. However, it is highly unlikely you will have to achieve ideal situations. In other words, getting other stats at like critical, maximize, etc. and using refined or common mystic zones is totally feasible as well for hitting the CP requirements. I personally would recommend doing a bit of mystic enhancing, then finish everything else in this guide, and then come back if min max is necessary. 
If you look at my FOJ, you can see that the Mystic enhancements aren't perfect. And then for reference, on the screen right now are the stats that give and don't give CP for Mystic enhancements. And for the stats that do increase CP, I've listed them in order of stats that give the most CP to stats that give the least CP generally. So for a guide on Aurea Node armor, please refer to the guide linked in the description. And for a guide on Rigamore armor, please also refer to the guide linked in the description. If you want plus 9 or plus 10 Aurea Node armor, the cheapest way is to buy Aurea Node off the board that is already plus 9 or plus 10. We also often get events that give out free plus 9 Aurea Node armor, so if you want to go for a plus 9 Aurea Node armor, you could wait for one of those events. If you want to go for a plus 10 Aurea Node armor set, my recommendations for what you should fill in for the L tiers is on the screen right now. And then if you're going for a plus 9 Aurea Node armor set, my recommendations for L tiers is also on the screen right now. And then some important things I want to mention is that the ignore defense on the shoes is extremely OP for boosting your CP. And also you most likely won't need perfect Aurea Node armor to hit the CP requirement. For enhancement levels, your lowest priority should be the shoes. And then I personally hit the CP requirement without all E plus 2 and E times 5 pieces, all critical damage 3% pieces, or even all plus 9 plus 10 pieces. So once again, work with what you have and use Ashell's calculator to see what you need to invest in before making a huge ED investment to buy something. So if you look at my armor for my gloves, it's just plus 9 with 44% all skill damage. And you can see that I'm lacking a lot of 3% critical damages as well. And as mentioned earlier, if you're going with option 3, you don't need to reforge and you just need to get your armor to plus 8. Just make sure you go with the Crimson Rigamore armor set. And once again, you want to remember to wedge and socket your armor. You may not need to wedge depending on what you have. The stats you want to aim for are critical or maximized as those give the most CP. Preferably, you'd want to use Sage Stones, but if you don't have Sage Stones, you can also use Shiny Duo Magic Stone of Extremities. And once again, there's a socketing guide linked in the description. And this is my recommended accessory build for hitting the CP requirement. So the first three accessories are Undying Flame, Demonic Eye, and Mark of Inferno. And these three accessories are known as Exodia, and they are free and relatively easy to farm. For more information on how to farm Rose Array for these accessories, please refer to the guide linked in the description. And next, you want five Corrupted Sinister Intent accessories. So you can craft and upgrade these through Pain and Belder Village. These accessories are early game accessories that should be easy to obtain. If you have multiple of the same character, you can farm on multiple characters to speed up the process. You really only need three of these. The other two are just decent fillers. And then you also want to get a Negate Fragment. You can get this accessory as a drop from the 12-8 boss, or you can buy it off the board. This accessory is a monster for boosting CP, giving Adaptation plus 2% and ignore Physical and Magical Defense 5%. The adaptation is also good for helping you survive in the raid as well. And then you want the Velder's Kingdom Necklace Strength Wisdom. You can buy this accessory from the board or get it from opening an advanced adventure or two. This is an accessory you should already have for your count. Alternatives include Velder Kingdom's Necklace Victory Destruction, Necklace of Extreme Magic, or Necklace of Extreme Physical Strength. And then you either want a flexible, tenacious, strong, or brave warrior skill ring. These are obtained from upgrading the Ring of Flexibility, Tenacity, Strength, or Bravery 2 through Camilla. This is an accessory you should already have for your counts. The upgraded version isn't a necessity. And then you also want a Tenacious Warrior's Ring of Fury. This is obtained from upgrading a Ring of Fury through Camilla. This is an accessory you should already have for your counts. The upgraded version isn't a necessity. And finally, you want an IB weapon. I highly recommend getting the Horde of Darkness weapon because of its fixed effect of ignore physical magical defense plus 5%. This IB weapon is currently the IB weapon that boosts your CP the most in the game. And then some other things I want to mention is that if you are having trouble hitting the CP requirement, you can consider getting other accessories such as Master Mode accessories, though I don't highly recommend this and you shouldn't have to resort to it. And then also, I highly wouldn't recommend getting the Nightmare Blindfold. It barely raises your CP despite how much it costs. And then for more information on accessories, please refer to the guide linked in the description. Alright, and so next I want to talk about titles. So Dark Gaze is a title I would recommend the most for hitting the CP requirement for Birth Raid. This title generally gives more CP than Resistance to Destiny, Pierce the Heavens, Survival the Cold, etc. I think this title is relatively easy to obtain, and if you are making a Radiant Soul, CC, Blue Hen, for birth rate, you most likely already have this title from farming growth rate. You can use other titles though. Optimally, you'd want to find a party that is farming for Dark Gaze, a party that is doing multiple runs of 12-6, but generally those are hard to find. You most likely will have to do 30 gods to get that title. 
12.5 through 12.7. Assuming you are either building a CC, Radiant Soul, CL, or Blue Hen as a birthrate alt, it shouldn't be too hard to get into your party, even as a non-fresh. And although I don't think it's necessary, you can either get or use the title Guardian of Secret Close Space or the Researcher Synergy for a chance of a double title count. And then for a tip to ensure you get a count for the title every run, please refer to the tip in the description. And then for more information on Rose Raid farming or Rose Raid in general, and for more information on titles and synergy, please refer to the links in the description. And next I want to talk about ERP. In terms of giving CP, the following ERP gives the most CP, and it's listed from highest to lowest, and that's on the screen right now. And then there are a few things I want to mention. So even though skill cooldown decrease does not give a lot of CP, this ERP is important to invest in as a Radiant Soul or CC because it helps Radiant Soul spam the skill Sun Shower more and allows CC to push for 100% upkeep of the skill Rapid Guardian. However, if this is going to be the thing that makes or breaks you hitting the CP requirements, keep in mind that this stat does not give a lot of CP. Also, adaptation is highly recommended to invest in even though it doesn't give a lot of CP because it helps you survive in 15.5 and 15.6. Once again, if this is a thing that makes or breaks you hitting the CP requirements, keep in mind this stat does not give a lot of CP. And then finally, although Polarize does give a lot of CP, if you can avoid it, it will help you survive better. But normally most players will need the 50 points in Polarize to hit the CP requirement. And then next I want to talk about l Surge Party Collection. So on the screen right now, I've listed the classes that give CP when registered to the l Surge Party Collection and classes that don't give CP when registered to the l Surge Party Collection. And for the classes that do give CP when registered to l Surge Party Collection, the one with a little asterisk next to it are the ones that you should prioritize. And some things to be aware of is that CU and Radiant Soul only boost CP for magical classes, and CE and NL only boost CP for physical classes. And for more information on the l Surge Party Collection, please refer to the link in the description. And then I want to go over other things to do to boost your CP. You want to achieve Masterclass. Also, if your guild has multiple guild skill pages, make sure you use the one that gives the most CP. If you aren't in a guild, I would highly recommend joining one. You also want to feed your pet. Having a pet fed will boost your CP. Ideally, you want a pet mellow because mellow is extremely helpful with dealing with gray spikes in 15-6 phase 2 and 3. Ideally, you want to fetch aura on your pet as well. You also want a costume suit and a 5 out of 5 IB costume. And don't forget to socket your costume suit and costume pieces. If you can't afford to, I would socket Boss Monster Damage Increase, Boss Monster Damage Reduction on your costume suit and 5 of 5 IB costume because you will most likely be using the same costume pieces for your Reach in the CP build and the Defensive build. And Boss Monster Damage Increase, Boss Monster Damage Reduction boosts CP and gives you defensive capabilities. However, do know that this stat does not give as much CP as Maximize and Critical would, so sometimes you can't afford to do this. And also because Sage Stones are scarce these days, I do want to remind you that you can trade IB costumes without seals, so you could potentially ask for a Sage Stone service. So if you're still not hitting the CP requirement, here are some other things you can invest in. So the first is skill cut-ins. You can assign a stat to a skill cut-in. Ideally, you'd want to go for tenacity, strength, or bravery skill damage increase. You can either get a skill cut-in from one of the event dungeons, use a free promotional skill cut-ins, or buy one from the item mall off the board, or from a caging seller. The ones you get from the event dungeon allow you to assign an effect to them for free. For the promotional skill cut-in, you need to buy a magical scroll, which is 350 caging, in order to assign an effect to it. For the item wall cut-ins, the 350 caging ones require you to buy a magical scroll, while the 700 caging ones allows you to assign an effect to it when you buy it. So these ones allow you to assign an effect to it, and then these ones you have to buy a magical scroll for them. You can also assign a stat to a custom awakening. Ideally, you'd want to go for tenacity, strength, or bravery skill damage increase. You can either get a custom awakening from the Dessert Cafe event dungeon, or buy one from the item mall off the board, or from a caging seller. You can get critical damage increase and or adaptation from artifact rings, critical and or maximize from artifact circlets that can help boost your CP. If you don't go for a max stat one and or double line one, it should be relatively inexpensive to obtain one from the board. For more information on artifact equipment, please refer to the link in the description. The force passive eroding energy gives a decent amount of CP, so you can consider getting the rare, elite, and or unique version. The force passive headhunter can give CP, but it depends on your class and it depends on your build. 
so I'd highly recommend checking on Ashell's calculator if any rarity of Headhunter will give you a CP boost for your current class and build. And then also you can consider imprinting. To imprint, you need to go to Asela at Camp Aurora. In order to access this location, you need to unlock the 15x region by clearing one 14x dungeon. Red and blue imprints do not affect CP, it's a yellow imprint that will increase your CP. You do need a red and blue stone socketed, but you don't need to get good effects, etc. If you're just aiming to boost CP, I would use common red or blue imprint stones, since those don't matter, and common or refined yellow imprint stones. Shining yellow imprint stones are not only expensive, but also expensive to imprint. And on the screen right now are the yellow imprint effects that give CP and the ones that don't give CP. You can also try rerolling your random effects, but I would highly not recommend this. To reroll your random effects, you need to use Bless Time and Space Scrolls. And you can reroll random effects on your armor, weapon, and or some accessories. And once again, I highly don't recommend this because it is expensive and the boost is small. You can also increase your CP through Synergy, but I would also highly not recommend this. I would highly not recommend this because you don't want to have to resort to paying 30 mil ED a week for Synergy for your birth rate all to hit the CP requirements. You can play around with what you have, but the Synergy that will boost your CP the most generally is the Time and Space Synergy that gives you Ignore Physical and Magical Defense 2%. For more information on Synergy, please refer to the link in the description. So as mentioned earlier, for birth rate, you will need one set of gear to hit the CP requirement and one set of gear to survive in the actual rate. After you enter the dungeon, you would swap in your defensive gear. The goal of a defensive build is the following. You want to get close to damage reduction 45%. You want to get close to boss monster damage reduction 45%. You want to get as much adaptation as possible. The cap is 45%. And you want to have as little polarize as possible. So for your weapon, you want another FOJ, preferably to socket with defensive stats and to mystic enhance with defensive stats. Ideally, you'd want to use a plus sign FOJ as your defensive weapon so you get more mystic stone sockets, but this is unnecessary, so plus 8 works as well. You want an FOJ here because FOJ gives 5% adaptation, which is important for surviving in birth rate. In other words, I would not recommend using a void weapon as a defensive weapon, but if you are really struggling with getting a second FOJ, void weapon is an alternative option. If you can, you'd preferably want to wedge your defensive FOJ as well, but this is also not as high of priority as wedging the FOJ you use to hit the CP requirement. For sockets, you want the socket damage reduction and boss monster damage increase, boss monster damage reduction. For mystic stones, you want to go for, listed from highest to lowest priority, damage reduction, skill cooldown, and HP increase. And also make sure you aren't going over the cap for some of these stats. Skill cooldown has a cap of 35%, Damage Reduction and Boss Monster Damage Reduction both have a cap of 45%. You want to build another armor set, preferably to socket with defensive stats. I would highly suggest using Rigamore Armor because Rigamore Armor gives at least 16% adaptation, which is important for surviving in birth rate. You have three options for Rigamore Armor. You can either go Sage, Cerulean, or Violet. Sage is highly recommended as it supports your party. Cerulean is generally a solid alternative choice that CCs have because it helps them upkeep Rapid Guardian, etc. better and helps with MP cost. I would highly not recommend Cerulean for BL or Radiant Soul. CC can use Cerulean because normally the Radiant Soul or Blue Hen in the party will be running Sage and Sage does not overlap. You can also choose to run Violet if you are having trouble hitting close to 45% damage reduction and the set does give HP and a bit of MP cost decrease but you should easily be able to hit 45% damage reduction or close to it and survive in birth rate without a violet rigmarole armor set, so this is highly unrecommended. You can also use a Reanode armor as your defensive armor. This is more recommended for CC. Radiant Soul, Blue Hen, and Celestia might have a harder time without the 16% adaptation that rigmarole armor gives. You can use a plus 8 set, or if you have a free plus sign set from an event, etc., use that. Preferably, you'd want to use a purple El Reanode armor set, but red or blue can work as well. For your L tiers, you would want the following that's on the screen right now. For sockets, you want a socket damage reduction and boss monster damage increase, boss monster damage reduction. I would recommend wedging your armor, but if you can hit 45% damage reduction, boss monster damage reduction without wedges, then you don't need to. Ideally, you want to use sage stones to socket the damage reduction, but if you don't have sage stones, I would recommend refined magic stones. You could use shining duo magic stone of the fusions, but note that these only give a max of 3-5% to on the weapon and refined magic stones give 6-9% on the weapon. However, they are a lot less RNG to work with. I would highly recommend either buying or farming an artifact armor piece with damage reduction on it. 
This will help you hit 45% damage reduction. This doesn't need to be an extremely good artifact armor piece, the ones I use only have one line of damage reduction. There is more you can do for your accessory build that I'm not going to mention in this guide, but generally I would recommend either switching out Undying Flame with a 13-3 accessory, or just take off Undying Flame in general. The 3 out of 3 set effect for the Rosa Raid accessories gives 5% polarize, which you don't want preferably. The 13-3 accessory also gives 2% adaptation, which is helpful for surviving. The 13-3 accessory is dirt cheap on the board, so obtaining it shouldn't be difficult. I also would recommend buying the Velder Kingdom's Necklace Endurance Protector, as this necklace gives 9% damage reduction, which can help you with getting close to 45% damage reduction. You can also consider getting the 13-5 accessory Portable Energy Coil, as it also gives 2% adaptation. I don't find this necessary, personally. As for titles and synergy, you can either farm the title for Nace Fruit or use a Resurrection Synergy. I would not recommend farming Eclipse because that title requires a bit more effort than Forgonese Fruit, but that is also an option up to you. I would recommend farming Forgonese Fruit over using the Resurrection Synergy for two main reasons. The first is that if you do need to rely on the Resurrection Synergy, you will need to pay 30 mil ED every week to upkeep Synergy. The second is, if you are paying for Synergy, it's best to generally run Forgonese Fruit and the Broken Seal of Time or the Third Path Synergy. If you are good enough of a pilot, you don't need Forgonese Fruit and or the Resurrection Synergy, but I imagine for most players, you'd want to have either of these as it will take a bit to get used to the raid mechanics. Even then, while it is not necessary, it can help your party if you choose to run the Broken Seal of Time or the Third Path Synergy. And as a note, Resurrection Titles and the Resurrection Synergy don't stack, so don't use both of them. And for more information on Synergy and Titles, please refer to the links in the description. And now I want to talk about some other things I would recommend investing in for your birth rate alt. So the first is I would recommend buying a trans slot, and you can get one for 50 mil ED from the item all. So if you go here, go to ED shop, you can get one here for 50 mil ED. And as far as consumables go, for 15-6 phase 2, make sure you bring stone apples and or giant stone apples. This will help you during the debuff attack pattern if there is a tenacity skill ban and CC can't use Wonderwall, and or if you don't have any classes giving super armor. For 15-6 Phase 3, Honey Honey Waffles are highly recommended to bring, especially to use during the laser attacks to help you survive and tank them. Light Orbs can also be used as well. If you are the main Black Cager and or backup Black Cager, it is highly recommended that you bring Light Orbs because you'd want to toss the orb before going into the Black Cage and or eat a Honey Honey Waffle as well. So Light Orbs, this is what they look like. And as far as settings go, here are some recommended settings for when you birth raid. So you want to turn off all skill cut-ins and skill frames, remove screen flashes, remove party damage dungeon, and turn your self effects halfway down. You also want to turn alley all the way down and unselect other character skill effects. And you do not want to have your consumable tab somewhere at the top. If you do, during some phases, you won't be able to switch in and out your consumables because the boss's HP bar will block it. So you want to make sure you make sure it's not at the top and you can just reset the location if you want. And finally, I want to talk about other optional things you can invest in. So the first is Centurion and Deangelion for L-Search Party Collection. When registered to the L-Search Party Collection, Centurion gives up to 5% damage dealt by boss monsters decrease, and Deangelion gives up to 5% damage reduction. This can help you with getting close to the 45% cap. You can also choose to upgrade Elipia's Aura. Upgrading this force passive to elite or unique will help you tank better. For CC, this will make his Wonder Wall skill stronger. You can upgrade force skills through Glaive. You can choose to get the pet Mellow and or raise Mellow. Mellow is very helpful in killing gray spikes in 15-6, phase 2 and 3. You can get Mellow from the event dungeon Velder Academy concert. So it's this event dungeon right here. If you plan to raise Mellow, it is recommended that you invest in encouragement cooldown decrease, so line 1 first and then pet skill MP cost decrease, line 4, and then encouragement duration increase, line 2, and then pet skill damage increase, line 3. You can also get consumable cooldown decrease gem of skills for your pets. You can get gem of skills from pet expedition, but they are fairly cheap to buy off the board as well. You can also choose to get a pet auto consume quick slot expansion. You can obtain a pet auto consume quick slot the following ways. You can get a temporary one for 30 days, from exchanging rewards from the Velder Academy Concert Event Dungeon to Ariel. You can also get a temporary 15-day one from any job change queue, and you can buy one from the item mall for 425 keychain, or you can buy off the board from another player or from a keychain seller. This is not a necessity, but an option you have if you want to take advantage of it. And for a guide on pets, please refer to the link in the description. 
And if you would like to, you can aim to imprint something useful to help your party on your defensive FOJ. For blue imprint stones, ultimately you can use whatever you want, but I think using shining blue imprints isn't too bad of a choice since the stones are relatively cheap and the RNG is relatively small. For red and yellow, I would recommend using refined at most because they are expensive and more RNG based. And the effects you'd want preferably for red and yellow are currently on the screen right now. And for more information on imprinting, please refer to the link in the description. And finally, the last thing I want to talk about in this video is you can choose to get the seasonal ID buff. If you have three or more ID pieces from the current ID set, you will get the seasonal ID effect and this can greatly help with consumables. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.